Hello, this uh, video we are going to talk about post processing my toolpath operations in HSM. So I have, after the last video of doing holes, we uh, completed that. It looked good, and so now I want to post process it. So I am going to pick post process up here. Now this, of course, I've visualized it, you know, simulated it. It looks good. I double checked my numbers, because now, now it's now it's going to make a, a code, GNM code program. So configuration folder, leave it alone. You're only going to ask it for trouble, and I can't fix it. So next post configuration. This is where I pick my machine. Okay, at South Elgin we have um, Haas machines. And we have um, CNC router. I made a custom one for our shop saver CNC router in order for it to work. So um, that's for some people. We'll use that one. But for the rest of us in precision manufacturing, we will use Haas. Generic Haas. Pick that. Output folder, where is it going to go? Well, it's going to default put it here, but I believe it gives me a choice when I open it up where to save it. Um, that's because of that came from my login. So there's some things that I have to uh, do here. Now remember, we said this was 00101. Unfortunately, in the post process, it remembers the last stuff that was in here, including these over here. So um, 00101 was my program. Yes, let's go Hawks, but this is my first, uh, actually we said it was um, HSM training. And then we are gonna put my name. This is what's gonna be the first line in the code. And a programmer should always put the name of the part their name and the date. Today is 10 10, but it's not the year 10. So 10 10 18. So check open NC file and editor. This is going to pop the editor open right away. Now there's some things over here. Allow helical moves, yes. So if it's blue, it means I've changed it. This was a much higher feed rate. Our higher machines can't handle, I think it was a thousand or some crazy number, but I know we can handle 200. Um, so there's some cases that we need to do that. Um, optional stop, yes. Most of this, like I said, if it's black, it's default and I haven't changed it. Preload tool. On the machines at South Elgin High School, we do not have um, a swing arm type changer where it you have to preload the tool so that when the arm swings, it grabs it and switches it with the spindle. So we have to change that to no. Um, and I believe that's it. Yep, everything else is okay. I just changed the rapid because I got tired of getting errors and having to manually fix it. So now, really, all we have to do is press post. And I can save this. It's automatically going to be a .nc file. I can save it. I'm going to put it where this other stuff is. Screencast-O-Matic. Put it in there. Okay, so this is the O word, but I don't have to use that. Okay, I can call it cam training. That way, um, when I look at my flash drive or I look in my folder, I'll know what it is. So usually I'll write the name of the part, and then when you load that program into the machine, it goes by the O word. Okay. So save that. Bing, there it popped it up. So here's what I wrote. HSM training, BARTS, and the date. 
Okay, it says a note using high feed rate of G200. That means instead of G00, it's going to use high feed rate. That's going to be dependent on um, what we set, I believe, in um, our tool or a particular operation. Now, this says tool 5, diameter is 159, it's 118 degree, it's a drill. That's the only one shown here. So that's the only tool. We had a lot more tools. So well, let me tell you why that happened. So I'm just going to close this. I don't know what that is. So I'm going to come back here to Inventor. It's because that's the only one that was highlighted. Remember, just like simulating, pick this. Then when I post process, I should get them all. It remembers everything from last time. Post. You don't remember? Hmm. Okay. I called it cam training. Has a short memory, I guess. Post. Yes, I know, but it only has one tool, so yes, I want to replace it. That's better. So this post processor, which is basically post processor, means I made processes, tool operations, and this posts it and converts it into G and M code. So that's what we have here. So here's my notes. Here's my tool, one, two, three, four, five, six. Here's the size of them. Minimum, that's Z, it's going to Z0. This one's going to minus 750. This one's going to minus 106. That's 650 deep. My tap's 400. So it lets me know my deepest Z, which is sometimes useful. So um, the way to interpret this is, and it's nice that it's in different colors because um, Stuff that involves a Z usually is red. My X and Y movements are in, or G01s are in green, G02 or 3 are in blue. Um, actually, it's rapids that are in red, because that means watch out anyways. So what this is doing is this one, phase 4, that's the operation. And this is my note description from my tool library. Here, here's the operation. Remember I said rough? Then here's my tool. If I scroll on down, this is all part of the roughing. Then we're going to 2D finish the pocket operation. That's finish. And it's the same tool, so it doesn't list it again. And then we come down. 2D contour, same tool, so there's no tool change. And it finished that up. Then it came up. Here's a spot drill. That's the operation. Here's the tool, drill operation. Here's the tool from our description. Operation, but it was tap. G84 is tapping. So this is my code. This theoretically should be good. Now, some versions of uh, Inventor HSM have the ability to come here to backplot, open up a backplot window, and it shows you these things, the line of the center of the tool, which not all the operations do this, but in some cases this is nice because you can actually arrow down, the tool moves, and you can see what line you're on and where it looks visually at the same time. Kind of a nice feature, but um, 2018, I believe, did away with it. Um, there was some licensing issues. They didn't want to pay what the uh, third party wanted them to, so they stopped it. I hope they get it back. I like it. It's good for uh, grading. So this is my program. I save it, and um, I copy this. I put it into the machine. I go to the simulator. I prove it out on the simulator. Um, let's see, 
the milling 2D contour one, we had finish the pocket. Um, we should have cutter compensation. So let's see. Here's the 2D contour. We pick, we over there, come down 100 above. Now we go to minus 750. Now we come over up, oh, look, G41. That's cutter compensation left. And it put in the diameter offset, which I needed to have. Then it goes, it ramps on, goes around the part, comes off. And then as it comes out, there's G40, cutter compensation cancel. Important. So you always want to check anything you use cutter compensation for. And I would use 2D contour with compensation in the control if I was going to try and put a chamfer around this top edge or even this edge. I would pick a 2D contour pick my tool, I'd use cutter compensation, and I would have to pick a Z below that surface of, I don't know, probably halfway up that angle. And then you set the diameter offset to the size of the cutter, and you creep creep in until you get the size chamfer that you're looking for. That's how I would handle uh, uh, chamfer around the part. So um, that's post-processing. Now it is, I can go in here and edit. I could change all of this information. I can add more notes. So I highly recommend this. Um, usually this is on a line by itself. Parentheses is notes. And what I recommend is um, use, if I'm using parallels, 1.5 parallels oh x 0 y 0 upper right corner spell it out you need notes i put a slash upper right corner got to have a closed parenthesis or else it's an error okay so using a one and a half inch parallels x or y zero is upper right corner where is z zero because sometimes it changes z zero top of finish part Okay, so that means if I have stock on the top, I'm going to set my, I'm going to face it and then set all my tools off that finished height. Or I'm going to touch all the tools off the top of the part, measure how much I got to move it down, and I change my work offset Z down to compensate for that. But if I have a finished part, I could put that in there and set all my tools off of that. You know, if I had one from the last time I ran it. Don't forget the parentheses, and then don't forget to save it, or else you lose all this stuff. So, that is post-processing um, basics.